Hello everyone and welcome back once again to Lawrence Place Factorio Space Exploration. I promise I'm going to stop talking about Ganymede very soon because I'm pretty much done here. So since the last episode I was saying I was, that I wanted to get fuel production to be a bit more sensible, a bit more efficient, a bit more made, made basically made from oil instead of made from vulcanite. So what I've done along, along those lines is I've expanded the oil system up here so we've got these, we've got extra oil refineries producing the oil and some extra machines here cracking the heavy into into light oil so we're just making as much light oil as we possibly can it's all going into this um, storage tank here and also petroleum gas at, at, at a, as, as much as come just happens to come through from the side by byproducts of these recipes and any excess of that is getting pumped down here because we've got anything over 20k will be pumped down and then that and all of the light oil because I don't need the light oil for anything else at all is coming down here and going all the way down yeah, this is a bit bit convoluted, so it comes down here, across here, and down here, because there wasn't really very much space to play with, so it's not ideal. Then it comes down here, that's all being made into solid fuel, as you can see, we've got quite a lot coming out through here. And then a little bit down here. Oh, so this is this is using the petroleum gas and the light oil. Um, we're not using it quite as fast as we should be, because I, I had some issues with, um, then with it being used up too quickly, so I'm going to put that back in there. And then over here... We're turning some of the light oil and all of this solid fuel into rocket fuel that's then being passed over uh, around here to be turned into rocket fuel, a liquid rocket fuel for the rocket. And we're still not really producing it quite as fast as I would like to. As you can see, this, one, this one's empty. This one is um, is at two, two thirds full, even though it's absolutely chocker of, um, of vulcanite. But what I've done, in order to make it go a little bit faster, I've got this pump here saying, so this, this rocket is the priority, so any rocket fuel that does end up in this one is going to be pumped straight through into this one. So this one is being very much prioritised over this one. And then the other two down here, these will fill up. Okay, so we've got the, the glass one has launched fairly recently, so that's, that's why this is now filling up again. But overall, we're now making a lot of rocket fuel from, from oil uh, through here instead of from the vulcanite. Now we are still making a bit from vulcanite, as you can see here. We're making, we're adding a bit more to the stream. And the idea is that if we ever get to the point where we've got enough rocket fuel has been made, that this will back up around, all the way around here and these will stop producing. However, until that happens, I do want it to carry on making a bit of rocket fuel from the, from the vulcanite because we just simply don't have enough coming through from the oil. Um, and there is a lot of vulcanite being made, a lot more than we actually need. So it, it seemed like a sensible idea. Um, and the, the oil is limited by the amount of processing that can go on and actually to be honest it's mostly limited by how quickly it's being dug out of the ground over here so if I wanted this to speed up a bit and to produce more rocket fuel from oil then I'd have to come over here and just boost this production system so that it's so, and have a load more of these um, these oil mines scattered around and there are more oil patches like there's one over here there's, there's one up here and they're all they're all pretty small to be honest um, there's one down here. That's that, that's a bit bigger. But basically, I think it's good have it. It's good using the oil a bit. But I'm going to keep, carry on using the vulcanite as a sort of as a top up. So we're going to have that coming through from there. And that was about it for um, for Ganymede. That was quite enough. Thank you very much. And I was quite glad to see the back of it. So uh, it is now working well. I've got more. I've got vulcanite coming through. I think as fast as certainly I've got the vulcanite coming through to here as fast as I can use it. The rocket fuel is perhaps still a little limited. Maybe I should be taking these um, productivity modules out of here. Then these machines would run a lot more quickly. But actually, that said, they are using up this entire input yellow belt here, so it wouldn't it wouldn't mean I'd be producing any more. In fact, it mean I'd be producing less. So let's leave that well alone. Productivity modules in this lot, maybe it would slow the whole thing down. Although I have put some in down here, along with a mod with a with a beacon to speed it up again. So there is some productivity being done over here, um, but I think I ran out of beacons, which is why I haven't done this one or this one. So that's enough of that. The next thing I've been messing around with is up in up in oops, up in space here. So the first thing was you remember I was having some issues with the um, the biological science over here. So I fixed the issue that I was getting here. Um, with the with the um, genetics data backing up in this bit by just dumping it straight onto the other side of this belt because it occurred to me that this this belt is only for the genetic data and it's only on one side of it so why not put this on the inside of it and then it'll get used by priority by these by all these inserters across here because they always take off the near side of the belt if they can um, and then they can then if and whenever it runs out they can then start pulling off the other side of the belt as well so that gives me a little bit more buffer space to play with and 
you know what? That seems to have worked. This is now running merrily away without any without any problems on there. Um, it's going through. It's getting used up at a fair rate. So as you can see, there's a fair amount flowing through here. It does frequently push some more out, but it's it's running at a happy rate. There's it's just it's it's okay. It's all good at this point. And we seem to have caught up with production of this as well. And I think last time I looked, and I almost daren't look again in case that's changed. Yeah, here we go. We've got all four of the sciences down here. These machines are all running flat out. Up here, we've got all four of these sciences on the uh, data cards on the input, and these machines are running flat out. So this is working. Um, I don't want to jinx it by saying things like that, but it is currently working. We do have a bit of a shortage of the uh, things along here. It looks like a train's probably been in fairly recently and scooped up a load. So we now we're waiting for that to we're waiting for all these to fill up, fill back up again. And down here for the bio catalog too. Again, it looks like a train's come in fairly recently and scooped them all up. So we'll let these fill back up again, and hopefully they'll be full again before we need another train to come in. So up top here, I've got biological science one and two working. These are now producing the science packs. As you can see, we've got. Um, it's not. Th th there's a bit of a problem with this in that the um, these things are still the wrong way round. So I should probably have this belt as the near one being done by the fast inserter because the it requires something like 20 of the um, of the vitamelange extract and then only about one or two of each of the others. So this long handled inserter is having to work very very hard and is still not remotely keeping up. So this is still a bit slow. However, it is working. And if we let's take a look over here. We've got a nice backlog building up of both science, uh, Green Science 1 and 2, and I've, I've tied it up down here so everything is going into the right places. We do have a huge stock of Green Science 1, uh, Bioscience 1 in here. There's 5,000 of them in this chest because of the uh, screw up I made earlier where they were being fed in in the wrong place. But never mind, it's, it's basically working. And then over here we've got the standard about. 30 I think I think it's supposed to be at least 30 in one of these and then when it whenever it gets below that this will load some more over and while I'm talking about research I've done a few other things up here as well I put in some extra supercomputers along here I put in put in some speed modules and I put in this uh, wide area beacon to cover all of those so these machines will now run faster more and more power efficiently just because each time you increase the tier of um, the thing that you're running here so tier one uses one of these things tier two uses two tier three uses three and tier four which i haven't quite managed to unlock yet would would take in all four of them and each one of each time you do that it extends the amount of time it takes so if we look at significant data a tier one takes in 30 it takes outputs four so it's it's uh, divided by nine uh, but it only takes 30 seconds even in the slowest of machines then the tier two takes in 36 and outputs six so you get a bit more out um, but it takes 60 seconds. It takes long. It takes twice as long. Tier three takes in three of them. Outputs eight, so you get more more significant data for your inputs. But it takes 120 seconds. So it's doubled it again, and that's why I've put in extra supercomputers around here just to, to boost all of that a bit. Then when you finally get up to the fourth one, you can't even make it in the tier one supercomputers. But it takes again. It goes from 60 seconds in a tier two to 120 seconds in a tier two. So again, once again, it's doubled the amount of time it, it'll take. So we, when I when I do get up to this one, I'll hopefully by then I'll have better supercomputers, at least the tier two one, so I can come in and I can it, I can just massively improve that. And once I start doing more science, this will probably start flowing a bit more rapidly, and we'll get through a lot more of these cards. Um, also, did I take? Yes, I've, I've also upgraded these ones to doing the tier three um, significant data, uh, no insight creation. So it takes in one, two, three types of catalogs and outputs more of the. Um, more of the insights than they otherwise would and the interesting thing about those um, is right so there's multiple recipes made that there's a tier one where you're taking one and it produces two or the tier two where you put in two and it produces six so as you can see that's better and then you have a th tier three where it takes in three and produces 12 even better and the tier four eventually where it takes in four and produces 22 so you can see it gets better and better as you go as you go further through the thing the interesting thing is watch the blank data cards though so on tier one it spits out two blank data cards tier two also spits out two blank data cards tier three doesn't do anything with blank data cards at all and that's what i'm on at the moment so that's a little bit simpler but then tier four you actually have to provide it with date blank data cards because you're producing so many insights you need some extra blank data cards to uh, to actually make all of those um, and that's going to mean when I do get to tier 4 I'm going to need to do some rethinking of this system um, and also and somehow get some blank data cards in here so that's going to be 
a little bit complicated because I've not really designed it with that in mind. What I'll probably end up doing is reversing this belt and bringing the blank data cards along here and over this way, getting rid of this um, splitter here, and bringing them along here and feeding them in with long with long handled inserters. So that's not going to be too difficult. The difficult part is going to be the uh, logistics required for um, sorting out where I want to have data card inputs, data card outputs, uh, making sure there's the right number in the station with them being fed in and fed out without it get, without it overflowing or underflowing. So that's going to be a little bit complicated, unless I just say, well, forget that. I'm going to carry on doing tier three on all of these until because that's a sort of a until I've stopped doing tier two on any of them because tier two puts data cards out, tier three does nothing with data cards, tier four takes data cards in, so tier three doesn't require any extra thought. It'll work with either. There's no, that's that simple. But having tier two and tier four at the same time will cause problems. So I think what I'll probably do is not upgrade these to tier four until I've upgraded all of these to tier three. And if that means I'm running the slightly less efficient recipe down here for a little while, so be it. I don't think that really matters. So that's going pretty well, I think. Uh, we're making the, yeah making those extra um, e extra insights that way, and uh, something for me to think about for the future as well. Up here we've got the green science, the bioscience coming through. And the other thing I've done with science while I'm talking about it is I've put in this um, wide area beacon here. And before anyone points out, it was pointed out to me just after I put this down here that you don't actually need to put um, a substrate, no, not substrate, scaffolding down underneath it. It will just happily run without that. But yeah, I, I'd, I'd put it down before anyone pointed it out to me. Um, so now with this, I've got massive quantities of speed modules in here, and um, these are these are basically the best ones I've got available at the moment. So we're using tier threes th throughout, except for that one tier nine, and that's the one I discovered out on Ganymede when I uh, took out the um, uh, the the artifact, the pyramid thing. Uh, so I thought this is a good place to put it. It'll it, it's going to be the place where it's most used. And then over here, I've got tier as high as I can, which at the moment is tier six. Uh, productivity modules in here. So this one is running at uh, plus 94% productivity. So it's producing almost twice as much science for each science pack that goes into it. So um, that's that's going to halve my um, the cost of doing science essentially. Um, it's also uh, got all the speed modules in this thing affecting it, just as you can see, because that's just getting the edge of the um, of the, of the, of the research lab and that's bringing the speed back up to plus 538 percent so six, almost six and a half times speed as i said um because it's enough to offset all of the productivity modules and then some besides bringing it so bring it up to running much much faster um and so because of that i barely need to have men i barely need to have all of these uh, research labs so what i've done is i've pulled up the inserters that are loading the science packs into all of the ones up here so it is literally just the bottom two that are running at the moment and those are enough that I can do research reasonably quickly. Let's look for something. What watch, 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 watch should we research? Uh, I don't care about unit capsules. Mining productivity. That's a big one. Seven and a half thousand. Let's do this vital vitalic reagent. Because I'm pretty sure I'm going to need that for the next one. So that's a hundred uh, one minute researches. If we start that going, you can see that's going pretty damn quickly. Um, and all of the science packs are getting scooped off here by all these uh, stack inserters as they go past. So this is working quite nicely. Now the reason this one isn't quite as good and only has three tier six and three tier three is because I've been making the tier sixes over here, but it's been a fairly slow process. I've got two of them in here at the moment and I've probably run out of something on the inputs. So as, as you've seen before with my um, diagram that shows all of the mod all of the bits that go into I think it's a tier five module is as far as I got with that diagram there's an enormous quantity of bits and pieces that go into making oh that's finished already that go into making the uh, the higher tier modules because each each tier six takes three tier fives which takes three tier fours which takes three tier threes three tier two which each of which takes three tier twos and so on so the numbers skyrocket astronomically quickly and I've run out of productivity modules up here so I can't make any more of these tier 6 ones basically. Um, so I'm going to need to bring some more up and then and, and, and then I'll be able to carry on building those. Um, I also need to bring up a lot of batteries because they seem to be in, required for lots of different things and I don't seem to have very many of those up here. So that brings me on to the next stage of what I've been thinking and that is I want to start using my spaceship as a replacement for the rocket that comes up and lands here with all the miscellaneous junk for the base. Because if you're if you're bringing a rocket up from, from Norvis, 
because it uses up a load of stuff, a load of rocket parts. I mean, even even with the even with the uh, the rocket replacement thing I've got set up at the moment, you still lose something like 20 rocket parts each time you fire a rocket up into orbit, um, and a chunk of fuel as well. So I reckon I'm going to replace this with some sort of system for catching the spaceship and loading that up instead. And so I'll load all the stuff into the spaceship fly, and have the spaceship fly up. So instead of having the spaceship fly up only when it's full, like this rocket does, and you see the rocket is 40% full, which is why it hasn't launched. There's loads, but there's all these batteries in here that I kind of need. So, and all this heat shielding as well, which I apparently kind of need. So instead, so it's, but it's not launching because it's not full. A spaceship, because it's so much cheaper to launch a spaceship, all you're using up is, is a load of fuel. I think instead I'm going to have the spaceships launching whenever they're full or after, say, 15 minutes. So it'll so every so often these sort of things will be, will be brought up into space. And I could potentially eventually expand that onto the um, other planets as well. I don't think that's quite so necessary for those. I mean, I do expect to head over to using spaceships eventually beca uh, because they're going to be, again, a bit more efficient. You don't have to worry about the logistics of making sure there's enough rocket parts and things on the other planets. So I think I will eventually move over to using spaceships for everything in probably except Ganymede um, because... Ganymede require uh, is, is so so far away. But what I can do, but what I can do is then is yeah just have spaceships flying back and forth uh, in the same way that you do with trains in a very basic way. You have the spaceship turn up, sit there until it's empty. When it's empty, it flies back, it gets another load of cargo and flies back again. So instead of having the landing pads, you have a spaceship sitting there full of full of stuff. So I think that's going to be quite a good way to do this. It's going to require a certain amount of rebuilding, but then that's always the case. It's, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of used to that. It's, it's just each time you level up in Factorio, you get those extra tiers. And I don't mean tiers of sadness. I mean tiers of product of, of, of tiers of um, <laughs> equipment. The other thing I've been looking into a little bit is um, starting to make my is to make my rockets running off run off iron engine ion engines, which I haven't. I've, I've done a bit of thinking about that, but I haven't really got very far with it. So an ion engine requires a load of electricity. So in order to run, let's see if I can just find the thing and see if, see if the box text tells, tells us a bit about it so I can point to it as I'm talking about it. Here we go. Um, so as it says, it uses a small amount of ion stream but lots of power. So looking at this, it, the consumption is 10 megawatts. These solar panels produce 3.7 megawatts. So I'd need three of these for each ion engine. So that's not unmanageable. That 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 is 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 feasible. Um, and apparently, I, I've been told by chat on stream that the um, that the ion engines produce significantly more thrust than the uh, than the rocket engines do. So they'll be better because of that. The other thing, though, is that they require um, an ion stream. And the way you make ion stream um, is that's the uh, blue cloud. There we go, blue clouds. Uh, you need one of these particle accelerators and those use a hundred megawatts so they're really power hungry so i'm not going to be running those um on a spaceship i can't fit, i don't think i can realistically fit enough solar panels on a spaceship for that to work however um because factorio treats ion streams as a fluid you can just put some fluid tanks in a um in a spaceship pump them full of ion stream <laughs> and then hook them up to the engines which is absolute nonsense from a physics point of view but I mean, it'll work in game, so that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. I'll have a spaceship that looks a lot like this. It'll have three of three solar panels per per ion engine. It'll have some tanks full of ion stream that it'll pump down into these things, and then whenever it stops at the space station or possibly other places as well, it'll refuel. It'll fill its tanks back up with ion stream from the um, from the station, and we'll just produce that here, where we can have massive, massive fields of good solar panels. Um, like like this, so we can just have a massive field like this where we that just produces all the power. Or maybe by then we'll even have got as far as the uh, using the um, the zappy thing power, where you where you put solar panels around the sun and then have a beam. Ooh, even better idea! I have my um, a station for producing the um, the the plasma st no the ion stream in orbit close orbit around Kalidus. So I have um, a load of a load of these solar panels there that are producing a million megawatts each because they're so close to the sun then we have a load of ion stream production facilities there and then we have another spaceship like uh, like this one that just flits over there with massive tanks in it fills up with ion stream brings it back over to the space station and unloads it here for all the rest of the spaceships to, to load up from that sounds like quite a good way of doing it to be honest i like that idea
I think I'll, uh, yeah, I think I'll use, try and use that. Um, yeah, so that's that's way off in the future, though. I think there's probably quite a lot of monkeying around needed before I can actually start producing ion engines and, and, and using them properly. But the first step is going to be using this and getting a, a system, learning how to automate spaceships so this thing can fly up and down to and from Norbis every, every 15 minutes. I've also built myself a Spidertron. Spidertron, Spidertron. Does whatever a spider con. And the, the point of this is that this is going, when I go off to other places, I can use this to do repairs and building work and stuff around on the, um, on, 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 uh, in space. So what I want, what I'm going to need to do is the Spidertron, unfortunately, uh, let's see, do I, no, that's not what I meant. That's what I meant? Yes. Uh, can I get a Spidertron remote, please? Spidertron remote. So link with that one. Bloop. So with this, I can tell this. I can make the Spidertron run around. It can go anywhere. Um, it is the Spidertron. It can go anywhere, including here. Yes. But the problem is, it does need something to stand on. And whilst it does have very long spider legs, they aren't infinitely long spider legs. So if I tell it to go over, if I tell it to go here. It just can't. It'll w wander over this way a little bit, and it'll go mm, maybe, and then it'll go maybe, and then it'll just sit there, and it just it, it can't. It, it it's stuck. It can't make it over there. So I need to um, I need to start making spider platforms all the way along the railway lines, and all that has to be, I think, is probably going to be little things like this every so often, and then the Spidertron. I need to then get that to load up with. An enormous quantity of so it's got at the moment it's got the it's got the robo port oh oh right okay uh par partial success so <laughs> that was built by the bots from over here so what we need to do is we need to get some some um scaffolding in the spidertron itself so that the uh so the spidertron will head out this way build it all and build its um and build its own spider platforms all the way out so that's um, that's a project for a bit later. Finding out, working out how to get stuff into the Spidertron, and I think you can, you can, you're supposed to be able to logistics it stuff into the Spidertron, I think. But we'll find out. That's on the to-do list. So I think that's um, is that about it? I think it is. I haven't messed around with any of the other science for a while. Everything is just now ticking over quite happily. If we look up here, we've got all of the um, memory cards we could possibly want. So that's good. Everything is just working. Um, and I'm going off and trying to do up do more exciting things like learning to use spaceships. At some point I will also be extending these things to do energy three and four, astro three and astro astro four, material three and four, and bio three and four. So there's there's quite a lot left to do on the science front. But I have been playing around a lot with spaceships because to be honest, they're kind of fun. <laughs> I want to I want to keep playing with the spaceships. It's it's an interesting thing to mess around with. It's like trains but turned up to eleven. So that's all we've got. To, uh, all, all I've got to talk about today. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to come along on um, uh, well, I would say Wednesday nights for the streams. They're normally Wednesday nights, but this week it's going to be Thursday because something else has cropped up on on uh, uh, has cropped up for me tomorrow night. But I hope you'll um, I hope you'll come along and jo join me then for the stream. Um, there's we're doing um, Industrial Revolution as well on Mondays, Monday nights. That's our um, our big Monday night stream with me and me and three of my friends. We're working our way gradually through Industrial Revolution. Uh, the biters are gradually being pushed back. They're not quite as much of a threat as they used to be because we've developed, developed some great technology to, for, for working with those. <laughs> and we've even managed to just about get purple science going. So yeah, things are going well. Do come along and join us for that. And don't forget to check out the GTA videos. They come out a couple of times a week. It's basically a video about three of my friends trying to kill me. And who doesn't love that? <laughs> Okay, as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.